Good morning. Thank you, Yanni. <laughs> Over the past week, um, I have been focusing with many of the youth in the community um, on some themes that have come up from St. John Climacus and looking in particular at what our habits are. And in this time of being sheltered in place and of trying to, as best as we are able and as, as carefully as we are able as a community to get through this experience, we can find all of our habits and all of our routines completely upset. Completely, completely upset. The things that we had planned to do, the things that we had hoped to do, they're, they're upended. And I think perhaps we've come to a real realization of this in waves, right, as things have progressed. At first, it was maybe, okay, we need to scale back our plans to some degree. And now we've settled into maybe more of a routine at home, that this has become more of our pattern. Maybe we are able to pray along with services throughout the day. Uh, perhaps our schools prepared schoolwork for our children, and we're helping them follow along with those lessons as best as we are able as well, right? And there's a kind of... Uh, new normal or normalcy that has come into this experience, I think, to a certain degree. With that, interestingly, I think also has the, or there's the potential for complacency. There's the potential for a kind of listlessness of what do we do with all this time that we have. And certainly in this time, the, the ability for us to gather online as a community is a blessing. It's a, a huge blessing for us to be able to gather in this way. It's not the same as if we were able to be here in the cathedral, but in, the, in a sense, we are able to understand a little bit more fully what it means to be worshiping together as one church, although we are not here present. But this idea of, or the struggle with complacency or listlessness or boredom that we have, I think is one that we it's really worthwhile to spend some time and focus on because the struggle that we have when our routine changes very radically is to try and find a new kind of stability. And even in trying to do that, we might not be able to fully achieve it, especially under these conditions. And so with all this time left over, with all the space that we have, what do we do with it? And in my conversations with a lot of the youth and young adults this past week, what comes up continually is that there's this kind of activity I think we find ourselves all gravitating to, which is that we fill our time with uh, checking the news, checking social media, and gravitating towards all these activities that maybe before the coronavirus came and before we, we began sheltering in place, they were something to pass the time a little bit at the end of the day or throughout the day as we were going along. But suddenly these activities, they've grown and they've expanded and they've filled all this other space that we have. And I think that experiences like this, the way that they're kind of interpreted through our tradition is that we have a sort of opportunity as human beings to seize that moment this kind of space and time that we've been given and to either go more deeply into ourselves towards a deeper understanding of who we are and our relationship with God or to fill up all that time with other stuff that sort of distracts us from whatever we might be thinking or feeling or experiencing. And that might be anxiety, it might be stress, it might be just boredom. But the task that we have at hand is really to find a way to focus our energy in a way that is productive and meaningful. Because what we are preparing for in this time, and we can't lose sight of this, is for the resurrection of Christ. And as we heard in the uh, Psalm 33, the concluding, one of the concluding psalms of the service, we hear this kind of truth and promise that is given to us by the psalmist. The righteous cried, and the Lord heard them. He delivered them from all their afflictions. The Lord is near to those who are brokenhearted, and he will save the humble in spirit. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he will deliver them from them all. The Lord shall guard all their bones, not one of them shall be broken. And in hearing these words, I think that we can find tremendous consolation because the kind of concern and anxiety and stress and uh, panic maybe that we feel at times can lead us to forget this kind of promise, to forget this kind of essential truth, that if we cry out to God, if we ask him for his, for his assistance, he will be there with us in our struggles. And as Father was talking about on, on Wednesday, we have the candle in front of the altar in remembrance of Adam, and Adam crying out to God, and at, being outside of the Garden of Eden, and asking for his consolation. And God answers his call. He's the first who is raised uh, up when Christ conquers Hades. And, and it's so, it's with this kind of confidence that we have to endure in this time and not allow those concerns and those feelings to overtake us, to eclipse any sort of energy that we might have to be able to focus our, our time and our thoughts in a much more healthy and productive manner. And we've talked a lot about the different ways that we can do this, but I'd like to give just a few suggestions practically, especially when it comes to prayer. If you're at home and you are praying the services, again, try to make it as holy as a space as you can. Turn off other distractions, turn off the uh, TV or the radio or whatever you might have playing music. Um, if you are able to pray the services when you're not preparing a meal, just simply be there and to be able to pray along um, as much as it's maybe realistic or possible for us within this time, right? Then the other thing that I would suggest too is that if the gospel is being read, light a candle. If there's going to be sensing during the service, light some incense. These prayerful actions, they help our bodies become, and our hearts become more in tune with what we are doing and what's taking place. And especially if we have little ones in the house too, maybe who would have been serving the altar at that point in the service, this is a great way for them to be able to prayerfully participate in the service in a way maybe that they're most used to as well. So if you have a son, have him carry a candle out or have him light the incense, have that be his responsibility. And then I think for all of us, as we are praying at home, it's that much more of an opportunity for us to try and pray along uh, or to sing along with the services. For the most part, we're doing things a little bit more simply because there are only so many of us. So this is a great opportunity for us to follow along with the words, to follow along with the music, and to, to try and sing along as well as a family. Um, it's another opportunity for us to try and go beyond our comfort zones, try and break through and to be a little bit more prayerful in this time. Um, so my prayer for all of us in this time is that we continue to find hope, we draw strength, that we are mindful that this is a time in which we are preparing for the resurrection, that we don't lose sight of that in the midst of all the other activities that we have. And you are in all of our prayers every day in our thoughts, and it is wonderful to be able to continue to see all of you, uh, whether it's over Zoom or through our social media interactions and emails and phone calls. It's a tremendous source of consolation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.